Um, thank you so much. Um, thanks so much for joining us. Just letting y'all trickle in, get situated for a second, and then we'll get started with the meeting today. Um, so I guess to start off, my name is Isla, and I'm the DC Organizing Associate, based out of DC, obviously. Um, just want to make sure that everyone can easily follow along with the training. So if you'd like to, you can turn on closed captions by selecting the closed captions icon located in the Zoom toolbar bar on your desktop. Um, on mobile, if you don't see a closed captioning button, you'll need to go back, then go to settings, then meetings, and then enable closed captioning, basically. If you're having any problems with this, you can message us in the chat and we will try to help if we can. The captions are automatically generated. So if there are obvious errors or you aren't able to follow along, feel free to come off of mute, interrupt and ask for us to repeat a section more clearly. While we have some folks joining, um, please introduce yourselves in the chat. Um, we have some people who didn't make it last week. So um, yeah, feel free to introduce yourself, share your name, your pronouns, the location you're based out of, and one thing you learned last week. Um, moving on to framing for this week. Um, welcome, thanks for joining us in the second session in our organizing skill series, the relational meeting training. Um, so last week, you practiced articulating your story of self, which is a story that illustrates the values you hold and the values that motivate you to act on climate. Um, tonight, we're going to use those stories. So there are a variety of times where you may want to share your story of self, for example, writing a letter to the editor, giving a public comment, um, speaking with your local legislator. But today, we're going to be pretty focused on the time where you will most commonly share this story of self, which is building connections with fellow activists. Um, we're talking about the one-on-one -on -one conversation or the relational meeting. And it's called that because the goal of the conversation is to set the foundation for a relationship between you, the organizer, and the person being one-on-one, -on -one, the organizee. Um, this is a proven way to build strong relationships and these relationships are critical if we are to succeed as a grassroots movement. Um, they're the relationships that sustain organizing work. And sometimes organizing requires us to take actions that push, out, push us out of our comfort zone, whether that's getting into in a room with an elected official, petitioning on the street, or leading a meeting. And the relationships that we are building during these one-on-ones are what sustains us in the movement when we're taking action and learning the stories of what brings all of us to take action on climate justice and helps us identify the values and interests that form the bedrock of the story of us. Um, it is the us that decides together what we need to do right now and to act on those shared um, interests and values. Um, just to recap the community agreements, since I know we have a few new people, we have four norms to follow for this meeting. Um, the first one is safe space, brave space. Um, the basic principle here is that learning new things can be uncomfortable and hard, and it requires us to be brave and step into feelings of discomfort. Um, but our ability to be brave rests on a foundation of feeling safe, being seen, heard, respected in our community. Uh, so wherever possible, we will strive to build a space that is both safe for us and brave for us. Moving on, second one is to take space, make space. Um, essentially here, be aware of the space that you are or are not taking up. So if you've been participating a lot, try stepping back and making space for others to speak up. If you haven't been speaking and you have an epiphany that you'd like to share, then you can step up, take space, say what you're thinking. Um, the third one is what's shared here stays here, what's learned here leaves here. So in these trainings, people may share things about themselves and their stories that are personal. So let's hold confidentiality for one another by not 
only sharing our learning or by only sharing our learnings, not other people's stories. Um, and then the last one is be present, lean in, engage meaningfully in the conversation that we are having here. Um, can I get a thumbs up from everyone who can commit to these community agreements? Cool, I'm seeing some thumbs ups. Looks good. All right, can we go to the next slide? The goals tonight are important ones. I think of one-on-one -on -one meetings as the building blocks of all organizing and every network, whether it be a, a local one or a national one, is just a different building built out of bricks of different one-on-ones. It's how we do everything. And the goals today are one, to learn the basics of a one-on-one -on -one meeting. Um, and if you don't know, a one-on-one -on -one meeting is when you have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with a volunteer who's maybe taken an action, but you want to sort of, this person to start thinking themselves as someone who takes action and as climate action as part of their identity, the best way to do that is a one-on-one -on -one meeting. So we're going to learn the basics. We're going to practice this with a focus on sharing the story of self because the best way to make someone to, to facilitate connection is to share something vulnerable about yourself. And lastly, we're going to make commitments to have one-on-ones beyond this event. Those are the goals of this meeting. Go to the next slide. The agenda for how we're going to accomplish those goals is first, we're gonna recap what we learned about story of self because story of self is essential to one-on-one -on -one meetings. Next, we are going to um, talk about relational organizing and an introduction to it. We're gonna go over the four C's that make up a great one-on-one. -on -one. If you don't know what the four C's are, you're in the right place. We're gonna go over the types of one-on-ones. We're gonna go over how to apply the four C's. We're gonna to get to the hard ask and we're gonna go over the different types of nodes. So that's all within relational organizing and the introduction to it. Then we are going to do uh, a demonstration and a debrief. So you will actually get to see somebody doing a one-on-one -on -one organizing meeting stand and sharing their story of self and then we'll give feedback. Then we're gonna go into breakout rooms and each of us is going to um, practice doing a one-on-one -on -one organizing meeting and sharing story of self with a, um, someone who we're trying to bring more into the fold. Then we're all going to come back out of breakout rooms and debrief and talk about next steps and commitments that we're going to make. Passing it to you, Zippy. Great. So part of uh, being able to do a great relational one-on-one -on -one meeting means mastering the material that we went over last week, which is uh, how to give and craft a great story of self. Um, so just a couple of questions to help us cover the material for the people here, for the people on Zoom. I apologize uh, that I am sort of facing two directions, uh, but can anyone give an example of what the story of self communicates? Um, keeping in mind that I cannot see the chat. Um, let me pull it up. So... Does anybody have an idea of what the story of self communicates? Why do we give a story of self? What's the reason that we are crafting stories of selves? What are we trying to get out of them? Yes, Scott, thank you. Some of your values. Um, and what else about our values? Um, How we got there. Exactly. So like values don't come out of nowhere. They come out of our stories and finding the reasons within our stories that we have those values is very important. Uh, we gave a framing for story of self last week. And yes, they thank you, Maeve. It communicates what drives uh, you to do what you do as well as how you got there. Uh, we gave a useful framing for how to present a story of self last week. Can anybody, uh, can anybody give uh, that framing to us back now so that we can share it? Or if you have a different framing, can you share how you might construct this story of self or how you constructed yours in the last week? Well, part of it was a situation where you got to make a choice and why you made the choice you did and what the results of the choice were. Exactly, our challenge, our choice, and our outcome. Thank you, Gita. Um, great, so now just to give a recap of what is, just to give a recap of uh, and 
a story of self that has been presented and practiced. We have a volunteer here, Nicole, who has prepared a story of self, and she's going to give her example story of self, and then we're all going to look for the challenge, the choice, and the outcome. All right. Here you go, Nicole. Hi, um, I'm Nicole. Uh, I grew up in upstate New York, and while I was young, uh, I thought the climate crisis only affected people in other places. Uh, the first time I could see that the climate crisis, or the climate crisis with my own eyes, I worked in retail in 2019 into the 2020s. Uh, during the summers, the heat was increasing, increasingly became harsher. Uh, this affected me and my other coworkers' health, causing exhaustion and other issues. Um, we were forced to work through it due to short staffing and COVID. After this, I wanted to change work so I didn't have to deal with the heat in the summers. I started working in an office, uh, working alongside GE, and during the during the Canadian wildfires in 2023. Um, there was so much smoke that blew over the Northeast. Uh, I thought I would be safe in an office building, but the smoke made its way into every part of the building. Um, we were told to work through it, but it was hard to ignore the smell of the smoke. Um, after that, I realized the climate crisis was affecting everyone and it's not just a distant issue and we need to do something now. Great, thank you, Nicole. All right. So does anybody have uh, some examples of what they heard in that that can outline a challenge, a choice, and an outcome? Tell me. Are we supposed to be all three or just? We have someone in Richmond. Sorry. Can we... Oh, someone in Richmond? Hazel, should I go all three? <laughs> Whichever you. Okay. Sydney, all three or just one? All three of them are just one of them. Uh, just give us the challenge first. Okay. I, I kind of, it seemed like she had this idea about it not affecting people, like where they were or whatever. And like it was just the situation for far away. And then it was like confronted by both the working conditions getting worse and then the, um, the smoke things and stuff like that, like that situation, which kind of presented her with that. Great. Um, so thank you for pointing out that those challenges were just about the, the proximity of the climate crisis and whether or not it was going to be a personal issue that affected her. Um, great. What I was the um, choice? Oh, Tony, I think, wanted to. Oh, yeah. Tony has been raised. Sure. Um, <clears throat> I think that a choice was um, realizing that the impacts of you know the fires and the smoke couldn't really be avoided or ignored by switching to a different work environment or anything, and that it was something that they needed to face head on by getting involved to do something about it. And uh, what about an outcome? I, I would say just the like, I mean, I would say the outcome implicit here is being here. Like, I think that that's like in this context, that's sort of the implicit outcome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, giving the story of self as a reason for why you're at an event is also another useful reason for a story of self. But we're going to get into relational meanings and how we're going to use it for those. Um, and, uh, Great. I really appreciate you sharing, Nicole, and putting together that story of self. I hope uh, as she shared and as uh, everybody was considering the challenge, choice, and outcome that was presented, that you thought about the stories that you're crafting and how it might fit into the framing of the experiences that you've had and that you bring to this conversation. Zippy, I, I, I wanted to add one more thing that you that you named but i want to stress it a reason why the story is compelling is it is truly a story of self a lot of times when we talk about the challenge challenges or choices that we have made 
we talk about other people, right? Like how, like other people's experiences. And I really think it's really compelling and genuine to be focused on your actual self, not other people. Um, because, and I think the reason that it's compelling is because the things that happen to us, we sometimes feel like we're alone and like they might not happen to other people, but often they're much more relatable experiences and the result of structural problems than a lot of us realize, um, which is why telling our own stories can be so effective. It's because a lot of us have gone through things like this. Round of applause. That was great. I just want to have a round of applause there. Thank you for sharing. Pa passing it to Gabby. Yes. Yeah, so now if we can move on. Yeah, so now we're at relational meetings. So um, what is a one-on-one -on -one meeting? Um, so to start off, what are we actually talking about here? Is it a one-on-one? -on -one? How is it different from getting to know someone? So I'm going to get into some key things to know. And if you're doing these things, you're probably setting up a one-on-one. -on -one. So the first principle of a one-on-one -on -one is that it's scheduled, meaning you have a set time to meet. Um, next, you have set expectations. And the goal of a one-on-one -on -one is to build a relationship based on shared values. You don't want to dissect the ins and outs of your favorite climate policy with them or only talk about the great things CCAN is doing. Um, and then you're going to share your story of self. So as you learned last week, the story of self serves an important purpose. It allows you to show your values. Um, by sharing that story in a one-on-one -on -one meeting, it allows someone to get to know you and indicates to them that it's okay to share their own story. It's establishing that link with the other person so that you can um, identify shared values and then a path to action. Um, so next, uh, what are the types and when do you have each type of uh, meeting? So um, there are three types of meetings that we can do. There's a recruitment one-on-one. -on -one, and the goal for this is to make a personal connection, to share your own story, probe for shared experience, experiences, connect on values, and pivot to engagement with a specific ask. Next, there's the maintenance one-on-one, -on -one, and the goal for this is to maintain personal connection, debrief recent work, offer coaching, and brainstorming. Next, there's an escalation one-on-one, -on -one, and the goal is to get someone to take on a new role, and it's not just to do a new action. So, for example, if they've recently come out to a rally, you can ask them to help them run logistics for the next rally. So, incrementally, in incrementally getting them more involved in operations and um, allowing people to take leadership um, in climate advocacy, basically. And so now I'll pass it over to Zippy to go into the four C's. Thanks, Gabby. We're going to talk about the four C's for a successful one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, so I find that when I'm having a really long, hour-long, maybe longer conversation with someone who's a new volunteer, and I'm really trying to get to know them and get them involved in our program, uh, this helpful tool that Mustafa introduced me to called the four C's is a great way to frame a longer conversation and keep in some bigger ideas and themes that help move the conversation in a direction that is helpful for motivating people to take action on climate. So first things first is you wanna build a connection with people. That means taking a lot of time to do a lot of active listening. It's really important to get to know people and to make sure that the information that you are uh, getting to know isn't just about like, how did you get involved in climate action, but like getting to know the person themselves and the communities they're a part of, the the things that they do when they're uh, when they're just engaging in their life too, because we all come to climate action from having real lives. Um, so it's not just what they do, but why they do it. Uh, and the way to get at this is really like a lot of open-ended questions. Um, open-ended questions are really really helpful for getting people to explain. Uh, as opposed to a closed question. So an open-ended question or a closed question, would you like to get involved with us? Yes, no. Closed question. Open question. How would you like to get involved? Um, 
But if we're talking about getting to know someone, you know, a uh, closed question would be a yes or no. An open-ended question is one that allows for more explanation. But we also want to give the context next once we've established a connection. And we want to keep connecting with people throughout. Um, but as we get to know somebody, we want to start to provide a context for why we're getting to know them and who we are in the conversation as well. Um, so it's about who you are. That's when you share a lot of your story of self and also what you're working on, like why, uh, why you're having this meeting is often to, uh, again, get people uh, involved or get them more involved in the work that you're doing with your various work groups and your local teams. Uh, so giving them examples of the work that you're doing that connects to the things that they, that they care about, that they shared with you as you were actively listening to them uh, is a great way that you can start to find out how you can exchange resources, ideas, skills, and time. Uh, you want to get for your number three, your third C, a specific commitment. Specific is important here. Uh, if you don't get specificity, like everyone wants to help, but giving uh, specifics of how somebody is going to get involved gives a much greater likelihood of somebody actually taking that step of getting involved. And it doesn't have to just be one specific action uh, or like come to a petition, come to uh, sign a petition, come to an event. It could be, you know, come to our events regularly. Like we have a monthly meeting, come to our local events. Uh, but for people who are really excited and really engaged, we want to have our catapult asks. So for these people, uh, yeah, they want to come to the local meeting, but they're like, what else can I do? They exist, I promise. Many of them are here right now. So uh, I think one of the important things to do here is give people as many avenues to get involved as they have time and space and spoons for. Uh, spoons being, you know, general energy for doing things. Um, and essentially, you can... Uh, ask them to bring other people. You can give them leadership roles to plan the thing that you're doing the next time. Um, so just to give an example of how these four C's might fit into a program that's already going on in Northern Virginia that we're uh, actually in the process of emulating right here in Baltimore. Uh, so for the connection piece, uh, if you had an organization who uh, told you that growing up, they used to walk with parents at their neighbor's baseball games in the local park, uh, the walk was beautiful and went past wildflowers. I just moved to Northern Virginia and I miss that. I want that community again. So for the context, you would probably tell them about the Weed Warriors program that's going on in Northern Virginia. Um, or sorry, not Weed Warriors, uh, Invasive Vine Removal. It's Weed Warriors here in Baltimore. I got confused because that's the name of the program that's training us. Anyway, uh, but Noting that they just moved here and are probably looking for connection is a good way to note that, you know, people are looking to build community and not just take a specific action, but like people get involved with things that they want to do because they want to find other people who are involved with those things as well. Um, and during the providing of the context, you'd probably want to share something about the history of how the vine removal program didn't stop at vine removal, but eventually led to fighting for more funding for public lands after there was uh, threatened cutbacks and showing how like little actions can lead to big successes if it means that we're organized and in connection with each other. Um, and then for the specific commitment, you ask about the thing that they care about, which is like they care about vine pulling, Ask them to come to a specific vine pulling event last Saturday in October. So you want to be specific because, again, if you're not specific, it's very easy for things to get lost in the fold. And we want to make sure that, uh, you know, it takes a lot to get a commitment from somebody. So you want to make sure it's something that's going to be followed through on. So you want to get as many specifics as possible. Um, and essentially, you want to make sure as you're going through the commitments and asking people to do things, that it really is genuinely connected to their interests and what they want to do, because it can be very easy for people to say like, listen, my work group is doing really exciting work. I want you to join my work group because you seem really exciting and fun. Uh, but I think it's important to note that like, 
people are the experts in their own experiences and we have to meet them where they're at and they care about what they care about. Um, and that when you're having a one-on-one -on -one with someone, it's important to engage with them as a whole other human uh, because you want them to do the same with you as we're going through all of this together. Um, because fighting for climate is a lot and we are going through it together. Um, so in order to get a specific commitment, we have to do something really hard called a hard ask. And I'm gonna pass it over to Mason to talk about that. Thanks, Zippy. Yeah, so as um, you just gave a great example of ask, asking someone to come and join an invasive vine removal day, it can feel really daunting, especially at the start, to ask someone else to do something, particularly when it's volunteering, right? So how exactly do we make that ask? There are three main things that we really want to pay attention to. Number one is shared values. You want to highlight your shared values as a reason for taking this action, which hopefully you'll have gleaned from right, the conversation you've had connecting with them beforehand. Number two, you want to um, be clear about the impact of the action. So clearly state why this action you're asking them to take would make a difference. And three is specificity. You want to give a clear date and time, particularly if you're talking about an event, right? So for the example above, asking the organizer to come to a vine pulling event, here's an example of what a good hard ask might sound like. I'd love to build on the idea about continuing to build community in nature like we did growing up. Seacan's invasive vine removal campaign aims to keep 100 trees alive by the end of this month by clearing them of vines. If you and I both go to the next event this Saturday, we can get over halfway to our goal. Can you join me at the park on Smith Street at 11 a.m. this Saturday? So that is an example of what a hard ask may look like. And a lot of the time, people say yes. And hopefully, as you, you know, practice this, you'll be in a good place throughout the conversation to know what a good ask might be for this person. And as Tippy was saying, you want to have a bunch of different ways of getting involved that require different amounts of spoons depending on what the person um, demonstrates in the conversation. But sometimes, next slide please, people do say no. And here are the three types of no's that we encounter most often when we're organizing. So sometimes people say no, and that's okay. And when we're having these conversations, we should pay attention to why someone is saying no. And that can give us more insight into how we can continue to work together. And of course, we 100% respect the boundaries folks set for themselves. And we know that there is space for many different ways to be involved in this work. That's why getting clarity on the type of no is an essential follow up in the conversation. And there are three types of no's organizers commonly get. Number one is not now. So an example of that might be, can you come to our next team meeting at 5 p.m.? The answer may be no, I have work then. Right, so that is, that time just doesn't work for the person. The second is not that. So here in Chesterfield, we do a bunch of canvassing. So I might say, you know, can you come to the door-to-door -door canvassing next Tuesday at 5 p.m.? And the volunteer may say, I don't know if I feel comfortable going door-to-door. -door. I've tried it before. I thought I found it really intimidating. Then my response could be something like, that's okay. We're planning an event to recruit new volunteers at the end of the month. Will you come to the planning meeting for that on Sunday at 1 p.m.? Right, so switching your ass to something else that they may have an interest in. So switching to a different that. And the third is not ever. So if I ask, can you come to Oswald Canvassing next Tuesday at 5 p.m.? And they say, no, I'm too busy to take on anything else. I'm sorry. Then, you know, that's okay. Thanks for taking the time to talk with me. We don't always get right, a commitment to have these conversations. So those are the three types of no's. And the way you determine what type of no you're getting, right, is by asking a follow-up question or two to get clarity on what, where exactly they're at. And then you can adjust your ask accordingly in the conversation. So if someone said no to canvassing, like I just demonstrated, you can ask why. Um, they may say it feels intimidating. You can ask how else they'd like to be involved and offer another opportunity, like a virtual phone bank, or like we did in this example, can you come to a planning meeting instead, which is something they may have more of an interest in. Okay, now we have some time for questions. I'm gonna pass it to Jamie to facilitate that. 
Thank you, Mason. Um, who knew there were so many types of no? Yes, that's a lot of information that we provided. Does anyone have any questions that they would like to ask at this point? Well, we must have done a very good job talking everyone through it if there are no questions. I know somebody has a question they're thinking of asking. I encourage you to ask. And if not, I'll pass it over to Mustafa to bring us into breakout rooms. Uh, hi, everybody. Um, we are uh, going to actually model the uh, relational meeting. We're going to take eight minutes to model it, and then we'll do a two-minute debrief. Um, you all will see, uh, you all will actually do the same exact thing in your breakouts. Um, so you're going to do a... Uh, you know, cut and paste on the three questions that I'll raise as, as a uh, as a coach to be talk to help uh, people um, to help the participants think through uh, whether the it was a really good one on one, what things might have been missing, um, and uh, and so we'll be able to in our breakouts hopefully do at least three rounds of this uh, when we get there. So what I want you to do is I really want you to uh, pay attention. I'm going to spotlight. Um, I'm going to spotlight Gabby as well, uh, here in a second, my computer's starting to freak out. So let's see, uh, I'm going to add a spotlight to Gabby. There you go. Thank you for your patience, y'all. So, um, I'm going to, uh, Tee it off to them, to the both of them in the second. I really want you to to be paying attention to where you see the four C's. Can somebody tell me again what the four C's are? What's what's one of the C's? Shout it out or put it in the chat. Connection. Connection. Context. Context. Catapult. What's the third one? Commitment. Commitment. Yeah, thank you. Connection, context, uh, commitment, and uh, catapult. Um, all right, so Zippy, Gabby, take it away. Hi, Gabby. Thank you so much for taking the time to meet with me. Yeah, thank you so much for inviting me. I'm excited to talk to you and get to know a bit more about CCAN. Absolutely. And I've just been meaning to check out this coffee shop for a while. I'm on a mission to find the, the best bagel in Baltimore. So I really appreciate you giving me the excuse to get out. I always just love walking around the neighborhoods. And I guess what's your uh, what's your favorite thing about your neighborhood? I really love how walkable it is and the tree cover. That's something that I didn't realize I was so attached to. So when I found a place here, I was really grateful for that. Mm -hmm. uh, so you moved here kind of recently? Yeah, I moved here recently. Um, my sister lives nearby. So um, when my job opportunity showed up, I was like, oh, this is a perfect place. So yeah, um, a mix of family and work brought me here. That's great. Where did you come from before? Um, I'm coming from North Carolina. Um, recent graduate. So, you know, the job search was rough, but it brought me here and I'm really excited and happy to be here. Definitely. Is there a lot of tree cover where you were going to school? Yes. And that's something I really, really miss. Um, I love spending time in the Arboretum right next to my dorm um, and, you know, being outside in nature and listening to the bugs and things like that. So yeah, um, that's something that I always enjoy. <laughs> Yeah, that's something I really connect with, too. I, uh, Growing up, I was a backpacking guide at the summer camp I grew up with, and uh, there was just like, uh, they always used to have us just stop and appreciate small moments of nature to try and like find wonder in our everyday lives. And I don't know, I think it's really important because the world around us is pretty, pretty miraculous. 
Yeah, hundred percent. And that's something easy to lose sight of in a city, I feel like. Yeah. Um, although we do have a lot of really excellent green spaces out here um, and we're doing a lot to take care of them and it's really volunteer driven. Uh, we've got some volunteers who have been taking uh, weed warrior training and are pulling invasive vines off of local trees to make sure green spaces can uh, can stay vibrant right here in the city where we need them more than ever. Okay, that's cool. I've never done anything like that before. I've usually just been like a spectator of nature. Well, that is totally understandable. It's, first of all, great to spectate. But <laughs> I, uh, I also think it's really wonderful to get involved. Like I, I remember the first time that I like gardened, it, it was really uh, important for me, like getting my hands dirty. Um, and we're actually, we're doing a, a gathering at the Peace Park with uh, St. Joseph's Monastery uh, or uh, Still Meadow. Still Meadow is uh, doing a uh, vine removal and uh, trail care program at the end of this month at uh, on Saturday at their Peace Park in downtown Baltimore. I'd love it if you would join us. Can oh. you come on out? Yeah, sure. That sounds cool. Um, so we'll be doing a vine removal primarily and will other volunteers be there? Like, a Yeah, so it's volunteer led. Our local work group leader took the training and now can set up the events uh, whenever is convenient for our members, actually. Um, so we're hoping to do a lot more of these as we find more people to get involved and active with our vine removal program. Okay, uh, yeah. Yeah, that sounds interesting. Um, are there going to be other like similar volunteers opportunities? volunteer opportunities in the future too um, because yeah I've never done vine removal but um, I do have some experience you know um, tabling and doing other you know sort of activities. Well one of my favorite things about climate action is it gets me to do all sorts of things I've never done before um, and uh, yes there are lots of things that you can do the table and petition with us. Uh, we also have monthly meetings that I think you'd find uh, a lot of community at, like a lot of people come to them just to meet other people who are interested in taking action on climate. And hey, if the Weed Warrior thing is for you, maybe we get you trained and you can run your own uh, Weed Warrior events and, you know, get other people involved around the city. Oh, wow. Yeah, that, that could be cool. Um, since I am settling into my new job, I don't know if I'd be able to lead anytime soon but I'd certainly be interested in learning a bit more that's okay uh we're certainly happy to just have you at our Baltimore team meeting we meet the last Wednesday of every month at St. Mark's Lutheran Church uh right in downtown Baltimore do you think you could bring your sister maybe so I can ask her she's a bit of a homebody so okay. well if you think of anybody else uh the more the merrier there's pizza and coffee and climate action so Okay, awesome. Yeah, I'm excited. I'll put it on my calendar. Oh, I think our coffee's here. Let's go sit down. Okay. I'm walking over. <laughs> and scene. <laughs> All right, great. Round of round of applause to Tippy and Gabby for stepping up to do that. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Um, so if Xander, if you could pull up the uh, slide. Um, so I think that generally there, there are three questions that I come back to with these uh, with this modeling, which which in this practice, which is what did you learn about the values that you share? Because the important thing is we want to we're trying to build a connection. What motivates people is shared values and really clear understanding of the what is bringing people to this moment? Um, and so, and then also, what did you learn about common motivating interests? So in order to like build a relationship where we're organizing together, where we're making a commitment to build power together, we have to have real clarity on the common interests. Um, and then what did you learn about the resources of, of your partner? Um, and uh, that you could ask for support, you know, for them to be utilizing to maximize uh, both what they're excited to do as well as their like skills. Um, 
So these are the three the three core questions. Um, what I want to note is it seems to that it was very clear to me that uh, that there was a common motivating interest around trees and protecting green spaces. Uh, Gabby talked about the Arboretum being near her school. Um, I think Zippy talked about like like loving the parks that are in her that are in her neighborhood. Um, the um, so we learned some clear common interests. Um, what did we learn from? We can start with Gabby or or you, Zippy. What did you learn about the common uh, common um, like the resources that Gabby was bringing to the table? Well, she's new to the community, so she's probably looking for things to do, which means she has time, even though things are crazy with her new job. Maybe not a lot of time, but time. Yeah. She's got time. She's got time. And um, was there anything else, Gabby, that you said about your about your resources or skills? Yeah, I had experience tabling before. Yeah. Um, and I'd never, um, I'd never done like any like gardening slash like weed removal sort of. Yeah, thing. I probably should have played more into that since we still need people to staff our trans pride table at uh, at trans pride in June. Yeah, so uh, had a uh, had a good ask that was you know connected to the values around protecting green spaces. And also we can build upon like, this is the importance of really listening in your one-on-ones because you may pick up on things that people share about themselves that you're like, oh, we have, we could, this is something we could really work on together. Like doing tabling or petitioning might even be uh, not as big of an ask as you think for somebody like Gabby who has experience doing that. She might be ready to go next week. Um the uh the the last piece I want to come back to is um shared values. So we talked about protecting green spaces. Were there any other values that we learned that they had in common? Anybody is welcome like to answer that. Jump in. Yeah. Scott. It was like coffee. Sorry. <laughs> Both like coffee. That's, that's the only thing I can think of. Community. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Well, I mean that that we may have been joking, but like uh, at the very beginning of the conversation, uh, it was sort of established that that like na local neighborhood is a shared value, uh, and investment just in the local community. Yeah. It's a little implicit and like indirect, but it was at the very beginning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, sure, uh, absolutely. But around community building, absolutely. Um, so my last my last question is: Do you did you from did you get a sense of why those values really drove them? Did you hear any story that articulated challenge? choice and outcome. Did we hear, in other words, did we hear story of self? Well, Gabrielle decided to move towards her sister. So she's looking for connection. Looking for connection. She's looking for connection to her family and then uh, ultimately the community. Yeah. Do we get a sense about why, though, what what choices, what challenges Gabby has faced or a challenge that Gabby has faced and a choice that she has made that gears her towards climate work? I think you have a hand in Richmond. Yeah. Okay, so it kind of seems like she enjoyed having um, an area where she could go into the woods and stuff at the mm -hmm. previous university going to. 
And um, that was like an aspect of her life, spending time with trees and stuff that she enjoyed and looking for something to do that. And now she has a choice where she can participate in protecting those trees in an area where she might not be able to spend as much time with them, like just by being there kind of a deal. That's, ex and I'm sorry, your name? Hazel. Hazel, Hazel. That's exactly right. So my one, my one piece of feedback is you identified there's these openings that we can probe, right? You identified what I would describe as an opening into a moment that we can lean into where we can, we can sort of uh, try to be in their shoes and move them to really tell the story of that moment. Um, so uh, like the, the, you know, thinking about sort of like the sensory details, like the what's, like what's what's happening? What is it like? What is it really like in that moment? And leaning into that. Um, so it's a little hard to do it in exactly sort of the eight the eight minutes. But what I want to encourage you all to do is to lean in this into the exploration of your story of self, both as an organizer and as an organizee to generate uh, the even a deeper relational conversation. Um, Hopefully you'll get a little taste of that in the in eight minutes when you do the practice. Um, uh, but certainly as you have the opportunities over this next week or two to do longer form one-on-ones that you practice, you practice uh, really getting to that story, uh, that story of the challenge and choice and leaning into it. So thank you for that. Thank you for that, Hazel. Okay, great. So let's go into uh, the breakout. And so we have, can we go to that next slide? Great, so we're gonna have um, breakouts by region. So we have a DC breakout, a federal breakout. We've got a Maryland breakout. So there will, we'll have people that are in Zippy's room for the Baltimore team, as well as uh, any folks that are joining virtually from the Baltimore area. We'll make sure you're in a breakout room together. Uh, Montgomery County, we have a breakout for, for you all. And there will also be a breakout in Virginia for um, uh, the Central Virginia and uh, Richmond folks. And I think, Xander, you're also going to have you're going to have two breakouts for Nova and Hampton Roads. Yep, I'm assigning people right now. Great, 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 great. So when you get into your breakouts, we're going to have about 30 minutes. Um, do eight minutes of deep of of the one on ones, two minutes debrief, and then be prepared to switch. Your facilitator will keep moving you through. So you'll need an organizer, you'll need an organizee, and somebody who will help take the lead on being just the observer and the the coach and making sure we're debriefing on um, the core questions that we talked about. The three core questions. Um, so and then the. Um, uh, and then uh, I want you to hopefully have maybe two or three minutes at the end. Uh, would love for you all to take that time to start scheduling one-on-ones with at least one person that's in your group. And a one-on-one -on -one hopefully that you can do within the next week or so um, to just start practicing the skill even more. Great. So let's launch these breakouts. Mustafa Ihem is the host now. I'm Mason. I can't hear you. You're on mute.
Hey, Judy. How are you? Um, are you I'm Montgomery? Good. Are you Montgomery I'm, County? I am not. I was about to ask you where you're based, and I'll, I'll move you to the right place right uh, now, I'm Judy. Montgomery County. Okay. Give me one second, and I will okay. try and get you that. Well, anybody. <laughs> that Montgomery. Yeah. Okay. You should see a button on your screen, Judy. Do you okay. see it? Yep. Okay. Bye.
You're muted, Judy. And someone did. Okay. I enjoyed talking with you so much. Really did. I enjoyed talking with Hello, you too, Judy. Okay. This was really wonderful. I hope to talk to you again soon. Oh, we got a bigger group now. Hooray. Yeah. Well, we're we're back got... in the main group. Oh, back to the main group. Okay. I like it when they do it the full screen with everybody talking. Mm, where you can see other people and not yeah, just the yeah. slides. You have is the host now. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Hello. Hey, Mustafa. Hey. Hello. I think I see everybody. Is Xander here? Thank you for your story last week. Oh, you're, you're so welcome. Of course. Um, okay. So um, I want to actually, if we can go back to the previous slide, Xander, for just a second. Um, I want to give folks just see modeling debrief. Is there a uh, breakout group debrief? Thank you. Uh, I just want to give folks literally two minutes here. Um, folks want to shout out any common like values story moment that you connected over. We'll just take, hear from a few people. Or what was it like? How did this feel different from a regular conversation? From like um, chit chatting with somebody that maybe you met at a community event versus having a one on one. It was nice to have a conversation that was very directed at a purpose and a purpose that we were trying to share and connect over. Um, so it made it a little bit easier to talk about uh, specific things. Like a lot of time about having a conversation, know what things you're supposed to talk about, what things you're supposed to, supposed to talk about can be difficult, but having like a, a goal in mind for what you're trying to do with a conversation, find ways to connect about our interests in uh, green action and green spaces and stuff like that. Um, and so like the directionality of it was nice. That's great. That's great. How else is it, how else is it different from maybe just chit chatting and, or there, was there any shared values or interests that you walked away with? Different in that you're seeking a commitment. Yeah. Seeking a commitment. We want to act together. I love, uh, I'm not, uh, I don't speak Spanish. My understanding is the uh, the word for power in Spanish is poder, which, poder. Is tra which translates right to be able to, yeah. to act together. This is an invitation for us to act together. Anything else that, fo that one or two people want to shout out before we talk about next steps? have one in Baltimore. Interestingly enough, we had the problem of doing too little general conversation before trying to get into the specifics of climate action. Actually, we didn't really get to know the person enough before. Mm. That's a good observation. That's a good observation. Yeah, so we talked about that in uh, our breakout group. Um, that it's it's probably the hardest part of the one on ones is to be uh, asking these probing questions to uh, get to uh, story moments. Uh, it's you know it's it's we we're used to being able to say, oh yeah, I care about climate. Why do I care about climate? Because like I don't want you know the glaciers to melt, or I don't want for there to be flooding in my community, um, which could be real and genuine things, but it's it's harder to get into be more focused and to get into the story moments of the moments of realizing that or experiencing that. Um, great. Okay. So next steps here. You go to the next slide. So hopefully everybody had an opportunity to connect with somebody in the breakout and you're starting to set up a one-on-one, -on -one, maybe you exchange contact information, but you, if you're not, you can take the next two minutes right now on the Zoom chat uh, to reach out to somebody. If you're having trouble connecting with that person, reach out to your organizer uh, and you know get them to help you get connected to them. You can, of course, also have a one-on-one -on -one with the organizer if you would like to do that. Um, they're all wonderful human beings, so I can vouch for them. 
Uh, and then uh, the second thing is to read the intro into the story of us in your participant guide. So it's pages 41 to 44. Um, if you aren't already, become an action member. We'll put the link uh, in the follow-up email that will go out tomorrow. You can also join our Discord. And so we'll have the link to the Discord in the follow-up email. Um, it's our virtual space where we're, we're building virtual community. It's an opportunity to uh, you know, pose questions as you're digging into uh, practicing your relational meeting and your story of us. So I invite you to share it there. Um, Xander, actually, just as we close out, there's maybe it's the third slide. If we can go back to it, there's a there's a just a a sort of visualization of the yes. There you go. So I, I wanted just to come to come back to this as a as a capstone. Uh, the story of self is is the first. The first part of this practice because we need to know have a sense of ourself and our story and what's moving us to take action in order to really do really great one-on-one uh, -on -one meetings uh with the purposes of moving people towards acting together in the process of doing those one-on-ones and in the process of hearing people's stories of self you get a collective understanding of the story of us what is bringing what is bringing both us together? What are the moments that we're sharing right now in our breakouts and in this space together that are creating a story of us where we're, where it's clearly a collective uh, moment that we're experiencing around shared values. Um, and so that's where we're going next is the story of us. So um, really, as you are thinking about, as you go into that, to the reading, Think about these moments that you've shared in your breakout rooms. Think about the moments that you've shared in your relational meetings where you are seeing and recognizing common values, the common interests. Um, and that is going to be a part of your story of us. So the us is the people in this room. The us is the people in your breakout. Really, So I'm really excited to uh, lean into that with you all next week. Appreciate everybody. I'm going to stay on for an extra few minutes at least if folks have questions. But thanks so much to everybody for joining. Steph, I had a question. Yeah. Um, so in our group, I mean, there were three of us and Xander. And basically, we, one way or another, we talked to all of each one talked to us. So mm -hmm. do we need to be revisiting one of those people or are we, we trying to get to somebody else from some other, um, you know? I would, I would either revisit with one of those people or if there's somebody else that's outside of that breakout that's a part of the organizing 101, um, you could do that. Uh, but the, the, uh, the, the, the usually are the one-on-ones are like longer form where there's somewhere between 30 to 45 minutes is usually how long they last where we can really get into story and sort of building that relationship. So the eight minutes is just sort of a, a snippet, a window into the conversation. So if there's somebody that was like particularly exciting and motivating to you that you had, you know, this snippet of a one-on-one -on -one with, uh, I would definitely follow up with them. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you, Jamie. Hey, Scott. <laughs> I see you. Judy, how'd it go? Uh, I was lucky. I had Jamie DeMarco. Oh, yeah. And oh, I heard yeah. a story about <laughs> living in Ashford and going down to the, uh, the uh, I think it was a mine, coal mine there. Yeah. And and the work that they did, and he, but he's very young. So when you do something successfully like that when you're young, it uh, it really changes your DNA. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. So it, was, it, was so it sounded like you had a great sort of. We had a great story. I, 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 I was I almost I almost goofed as much <laughs> training as, as much training as I had in organizing. I almost goofed. I, <laughs> I realized I really didn't know enough about him, and I said. 
you know, we're leaving here and I don't know you about anything about you. So then, then he told me his story about going to school in Asheville. Here That's right. amazing. That's amazing. Yes. Scott, how about for you? I'm sorry. I'm busy writing Jamie about the one-on-one. -on -one. What's the question? Oh, you're so good. You're so good. <laughs> uh, well, uh, uh, I was just uh, curious to hear about how the, the practice went for you. Oh, pretty good. I mean, it's it's a little art. I mean, obviously, it's artificial, but that's okay. Um, I guess I've found, you know, since we're all pretty simpatico and we're doing some of the same things that um, it was a little repetitious, you know, like everyone differed some because we're all different people, but mm -hmm. the issues are similar and and the activities, you know, the commitment stuff is. But no, I think it's I think it's a good exercise. And like I said, I'm I'm it looks like Jamie's gone, but. Uh, she and I were just uh, arranging to to do the longer one. That's great. So That's thank great. You. Thanks for all your good work. And it's too bad. I hope we didn't miss anybody because of that false alarm about the meeting getting canceled. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Uh, that was an incidental glitch with the calendar. So yeah. well, I'm sure yeah. it's not fault. I just I hope it didn't hope we didn't lose anybody as a result. Absolutely. Yeah, I hope so too. But we'll do the follow up and make sure we get everybody on board for for next week sounds good i'm gonna thanks take so off. much thanks so much to the both of you have a wonderful thank you. evening you do the same thank you Bye.